Okay, Steve, would you like to ask a question and where are you from? From New York. Uh, Stephen, when you said you had family that had this, I have a close friend that's going through this. He's in dialysis. He just had his leg amputated. And that statistic that they said that the dialysis unit was going to be half empty in five years, what's the mortality for somebody that doesn't go plant-based? And what's the difference between if they make the lifestyle changes or they don't? Yes, Steve, th this is a really um, important question. You know, when, when we look at patients who've been on dialysis, the longest patient I ever had on dialysis was he started in the 60s. He was one of the original folks that started on dialysis. And he was on it for, gosh, 40-some uh, years. And... Um, it was very, um, very difficult to see all of the different things that he had gone through because the, the technology wasn't as well. But the flip side to that argument was that without knowing what to do, he was doing so many of the things that we talk about today. There's no hard and fast statistics, but what we do know is that for folks who end up moving more, who are focusing on keeping their potassiums at bay, who have their phosphorus in range going on, whose blood pressures are controlled and whose volumes are controlled. On dialysis, think of dialysis every time you do that, that it kind of stuns the heart. When the machine is turned on, there's an entire unit of blood that's taken out of your body that's sitting in the machine throughout that whole three to four hours. So imagine if I was to let you bleed and then make you run a marathon. And then I had you do that marathon three times a week. And every time you ran the marathon, you were missing a unit of blood. That's a, a very graphic way to describe how hemodialysis is occurring. But when it's occurring, you, you're sort of fighting. And so when you're going into a fight, you want to give yourself the best chance. So for your friend, what I would say is same stuff that matters is fluid control, fluid control, fluid control. You got to do that because the more the machine has to work to take the fluid out, the more it stresses the heart. Remember, it's a vacuum. It's sucking out blood and then it's using diffusion to get rid of the fluid out of there. So as you're creating this more pressure and the machine is working harder, your heart is working harder. Take the pressure off the heart. People on dialysis, what ends up happening is, is the dialysis machine, we have a salt gradient. Everything that Jen and I just spoke about in terms of salt. Now think about a machine that's loaded with salt on one side, and we're using that to try to pull fluid out. And because we're using that, we can actually make it so that when you're done with dialysis, you're going to be intensely thirsty. So it's very common for a patient's post-dialysis to go home, be really thirsty, drink too much, come back to the machine, then the machine has to work extra hard. So this is where fluid, fluid, fluid matters. Blood pressure matters. If your blood pressure is not controlled, you got to control it. Phosphorus, remember, they're going to precipitate. It's going to light up like a Christmas tree. All your blood vessels are going to harden. You're going to run out of places to do dialysis because of the fact that the blood vessels are no good. Phosphorus matters. We have to control the phosphorus. And because the risk of arrhythmia on dialysis with high potassium is so high, we take it very, very seriously. Those are the fundamental things that are really key. And then everything that Jen has mentioned about the diet portion, about the fiber portion, all of those things are important because you're going to change the type of uremic toxins you're producing. You're going to decrease the production. So I couldn't give you any specific statistics, but what I can tell you is there are so many things that the person can do when they go on dialysis and when they're at home waiting to mm -hmm. go for the next session, the doctors and the dietitians play a very small role in advising. But at the end of the day, we can only give you the knowledge. You still got to walk to the door. I agree with that. If you think about in any, in any condition, any chronic condition, you're with your doctor what, 5% of the time? If you're a dialysis patient or with your doctor or your dietitians, maybe 10% of the time, you're with yourself a lar a much larger percentage of time. I would tell you, go to your friend and encourage your friend to be activated in his care. Be his. He needs to be the number one team mate on the team. 
the number one. He needs to be the captain of the team. And and so a lot of times people think in healthcare, well, it's my 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 healthcare team out here is helping me. No, no, your friend is part of that team. He has got to fight for himself. Um, help the dialysis machine is what I tell patients. Help the dialysis machine. Don't come in here with so much fluid that the nurses are having to pull it off of you and the machine form. Help that machine. Come in here with less fluid. Help that machine be less acidic, eat a more alkaline diet. Help that machine eat less phosphorus because the machine doesn't remove phosphorus very well anyway in, in center hemodialysis. So doing everything at home he can possibly do to be as healthy as he possibly can. Another thing that we haven't talked about, and Dr. Hashmi actually may have some really good suggestions on this as well, is, you know, there's different modalities that a patient can choose. Um, some of them have better survival rates. So your friend in, if he, I don't know what type of dialysis he's on, but if he's in in-center hemodialysis where he goes three times a week, there's also dialysis that you can do at home called peritoneal dialysis. It's a little bit easier on the heart. Um, there's home hemodialysis. So um, and, and those, sometimes you'll get better clearance than you will. You're, you'll get those toxins cleared out a little bit better depending on the patient and their situation. But sometimes they do a whole lot better that way. They may live longer on one of those other modalities. So that's another thing is just thinking about modality choice. Is he on the right type of dialysis? So. Okay, thank you. Joe, where are you from and would you like to ask a question? Yes, I'm from Huntington, Long Island. Um, have you ever encountered or heard of any patients that have had uh, tumors in their kidney that lived a plant-based lifestyle, that exercised, were on a, a very, very good diet, um, and when they found out they had the tumor, there was at, there's absolutely uh, no kidney dysfunction other than um, a little bit of light blood in the morning. Um, does that mean that, that that kidney needs to be removed? Or have you ever heard that there's an opportunity if that kidney came there, it can go away? I mean, the uh, tumor. Yeah, so this is a really important question. The first thing you got to understand is, is oftentimes we'll see that tumors can even start as cysts. Now, after the age of 50, most people will have simple cysts in their kidney. So that's very common. But as cysts, the walls of the cysts start to thicken or you start to see lines through them. We call them septations. It starts to become very, very important Then we follow those. When you have a solid tumor, there are several techniques now. So in the old days, it was, yes, you got a tumor, you take the kidney out. Now, there's all sorts of things instead of just a radical nephrectomy, there can be a partial nephrectomy, they can go ahead and go in and ablate it going on. The reason you don't want to think of the idea of just ignoring it, at a minimum, your urologist may say things like, we're going to do serial scanning to see, is it growing? Because what you don't want to do is have that kidney cell, the tumor cell, leave the kidney and go deposit somewhere else. And now you have metastatic disease. So whenever people have blood in the urine, it's really important, especially for men, because there's no reason why they should have blood in the urine. Most common source of blood in the urine is the prostate, but you need to have a cystoscopy. You need to have that evaluated. So if that's the case, it's really important. We have so many good therapies now when it comes to treating kidney cancer, that it's a completely different field than it was just 10 years ago. So the one advice is please do not ignore it. And if you're working with a um, urologist and maybe you, know, you don't see eye to eye, get a second opinion, get a third opinion, but do what you gotta do because at the end of the day, you want a doctor that's gonna listen to you and that's gonna create a partnership with you, but please do not ignore it. Uh, Joe, anything else? Um, does um, Jen have any, uh, has she dealt with anything like that? Does, does it mean that the kidney has to come out if they see a tumor in there or is it possible? Um, I'm, I am doing sonograms and so far in, in over four weeks, I noticed that it stopped growing. So mm -hmm. from the CAT scan to the sonogram, it grew a couple of weeks and then four weeks later, the sonogram to the sonogram, it didn't grow anymore. And, and that was the four weeks that I was in intensive, really good intensive program of trying to stop it. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, I haven't never had a patient like with a tumor and in your exact situation. But I will say is that I have had many patients that the only change they made was nutrition. And we saw unbelievable results. No medication changes at all, just nutrition. Um, so, you know, if, if you're seeing results, continue on your program, work with your physician, um, and hopefully it won't have to come out. Okay. I mean, have you heard of Tumor shrinking ever in kidneys? Um, more in like with people with polycystic kidney disease. Yes, I have heard of those tumors shrinking, the cyst shrinking, but that's a little bit different than a tumor. Okay, tumors typically don't shrink and 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 go away, is what you're saying. I'm not 100 percent sure on that, Doctor Hashmi. Do you know if tumors no, typically? I mean I, I, yeah, so Joe, this is really important because, you know, part of this is, is there's a lot of modalities for treatment and diet plays such an important role in your overall health. But I, I want to emphasize that if you miss the opportunity to get early treatment with one of the different modalities that we have, and it doesn't need to mean taking the kidney out, there are other modalities that can happen. But I want to stress, you, you want to pay very close attention because if a cancer cell metastasizes, that's a whole different ballpark that you have to deal with. And that's why whenever we have somebody with kidney cancer, at the end of the day, I always emphasize diet, but I can't stress this enough is, is you got to work with a very good urologist. That is absolutely critical to make sure you don't risk this thing getting out of hand. And one, congratulations, the fact that it's not growing, that's great. Number two is please work very, very closely with your urologist. This is critical to make sure you do that. Thank you. Right. And, you know, another thing is just going back, we're back at Instagram again, but, you know, just urge caution, you know, my going back to my husband having cancer, you know, we got all, you'll get all sorts of people telling you, oh, if you just drink carrot juice, if you just do this or that, it's going to shrink that, that tumor and everything's going to be fine. Um, no, do not believe that. It's urging caution. I agree with Dr. Hashmi, get get with the doctor and make sure that you are following the appropriate protocol. Don't just follow something that you saw or heard um, about nutrition. Sometimes nutrition, yes, it can help. I have seen extreme wonderful things happen with just nutrition, but at the same time, sometimes nutritional advice from people who aren't qualified can be very dangerous because it will keep you from getting treatment that you should get um, in hopes that some sort of nutrition fab will fix your problem. And that may not be the case. Thank you. Okay. So I want to thank you both. Bob, if we want to follow up with either of you, um, Jen, how would we follow up with you? How do, what, 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 what's the best way to get your books, your information, your website? How do we stay in touch with you? I'm sorry, you're muted. Hold on. Hold on. Good. Okay, <laughs> sorry about that. Again. Both of the books are on Amazon. If you are a patient, be sure to get the one that says for the patient. It's it's it says in red, big red for the patient. Um, you can catch me if you want to email me, Jen at plantfedwellness.com. I'm on Instagram, plantfed kidney, plantfed underscore kidneys. Um, and then my website is plantfedwellness.com. And Wait. my talk on May the 15th, I have all of that on there as well. So you can catch me. I still have another presentation coming up in this in this um, series. So I hope all of you will be there um, and we can talk further. We can talk even more about the subject. And if someone wants a consultation with you, do you do phone consultations or Zoom consultations? I do. Yes, I do. I, um, I have a virtual practice. So yes, I can meet with people one-on-one. -on -one. Okay. I also have, here's another thing. This is really important. I should have said this. This is on my website, plantfedwellness.com. And I did this for, for this very reason. Sometimes it's really sad that nutritional care is not covered by insurance a whole lot of the time. Okay. Um, sometimes people can't afford it. And I realized that. And I made a program the book will help you, but I also did a program that's very affordable. It's an eight module program. I teach all eight modules. Um, you can find that on my website, um, but it's for you. It's for you. Oh, here we go. Yes. It's for you. If you don't, if you don't have insurance that covers nutrition, you can't afford it and you feel hopeless. That's there for you. Okay. So you need, you need a dietitian. You need help. 
Um, and I want to help people in every way that I can because it bothers me very much. This is my life's work. It bothers me when people don't get help and they just fall forward to dialysis. That's not fair. Um, and, and you deserve the best treatment possible. So yes, there's the eight, eight week fundamentals right there. So, yep. And, uh, Jen is going to be speaking on Monday, May 15th at 11 a.m. to give her individual lecture for people that would like to uh, hear her speak again and see her full presentation. Uh, Dr. Hashmi, would you, how do people get in touch with you? Can we speak to you by Zoom? What's the best way to follow up with you? Yeah, so there are uh, two YouTube channels. This is the first one, which is uh, Self Principle, S-E-L-F. And the other one is Plant-Based Kidney Health, where myself and Michelle Crossmer, who's a renal dietitian, we basically answer people's questions, whatever questions they are about kidney health, and we collect those. So those are the two YouTube channels. The website is selfprinciple.org. That's a nonprofit that we have, where um, the goal there is, is really to support children's education and to uh, create content that's educational for everyone going on. So those are the best ways to get a hold of me. If you're on Instagram, it's just my name, Sean Hashmi MD. And uh, it would be great. I would love to connect. Thank you. And, and you have, it looks like 235 videos on kidney health on your YouTube channel. Uh, there, there's quite a bit. <laughs> I don't know how many, but there, there's a, a decent amount. So it's uh, all sorts of topics on this one in terms of nutrition and kidney health. And then the plant-based kidney health channel is specific for just kidney topics. Okay, so this was fantastic. Uh, this information is not easy to find. I don't know why it's not easy to find, but I really glued to this. I heard a lot of stuff I never heard. Uh, if we could unmute everyone, I'm, I wanna thank you. And I think other people would also wanna thank you for the opportunity to hear this information. So we all wanna thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.